Hello, friend. Welcome to the Whole Word Podcast. This is Pastor Pitts Evans. On this podcast, we read and discuss one chapter of God's Word per episode. Let's go now to the Bible and see what the Lord has for us today. Reading from the New International Version of the Bible, Mark chapter 2. A few days later, when Jesus again entered Capernaum, the people heard that he had come home. They gathered in such large numbers that there was no room left, not even outside the door, and he preached the word to them. Some men came, bringing to him a paralyzed man carried by four of them. Since they could not get him to Jesus because of the crowd, they made an opening in the roof above Jesus by digging through it and then lowered the mat the man was lying on. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralyzed man, Son, your sins are forgiven. Now some of the teachers of the law were sitting there, thinking to themselves, Why does this fellow talk like that? He's blaspheming. Who can forgive sins but God alone? Immediately Jesus knew in his spirit that this was what they were thinking in their hearts, and he said to them, Why are you thinking these things? Which is easier, to say to this paralyzed man, Your sins are forgiven, or to say, Get up, take your mat, and walk? But I want you to know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. So he said to the man, I tell you, get up, take your mat, and go home. He got up, took his mat, and walked out in full view of them all. This amazed everyone, and they praised God, saying, We have never seen anything like this. Once again, Jesus went out beside the lake. A large crowd came to him, and he began to teach them. As he walked along, he saw Levi, the son of Alphaeus, sitting at the tax collector's booth. Follow me, Jesus told him, and Levi got up and followed him. While Jesus was having dinner at Levi's house, many tax collectors and sinners were eating with him and his disciples, for there were many who followed him. When the teachers of the law, who were Pharisees, saw him eating with the sinners and tax collectors, they asked his disciples, Why does he eat with tax collectors and sinners? On hearing this, Jesus said to them, It is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. Now John's disciples and the Pharisees were fasting. Some people came and asked Jesus, How is it that John's disciples and the disciples of the Pharisees are fasting, but yours are not? Jesus answered, How can the guest of the bridegroom fast while he is still with them? They cannot, so long as they have him with them. But the time will come when the bridegroom will be taken from them, and on that day they will fast. No one sews a patch of unshrunk cloth on an old garment. Otherwise, the new piece will pull away from the old, making the tear worse. And no one pours new wine into an old wineskin. Otherwise, the wine will burst the skin, and both the wine and the wineskin will be ruined. No, they pour new wine into new wineskins. One Sabbath, Jesus was going through the grain fields, and as his disciples walked along, they began to pick some heads of grain. The Pharisees said to him, Look, why are they doing what's unlawful on the Sabbath? He answered, Have you never read what David did when he and his companions were hungry and in need? In the days of Abiathar the high priest, he entered the house of God and ate the consecrated bread, which is lawful only for priests to eat. And he also gave some to his companions. Then he said to them, The Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. We start off with a profound miracle and with the forgiving of sins. And so these men had heard that Jesus was in town, and apparently they had a sick friend who was paralyzed. And they came up with this plan to take the man to Jesus, but the crowds were so big they couldn't get to Jesus. And uh, they went to the house where he was staying and tore a hole in the roof above Jesus and lowered the man down on the mat he was laying on. So verse 5 says, When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralyzed man, Son, your sins are forgiven. Now, this is the central issue, apparently, that was going on with this man. He was in need of forgiveness. And so Jesus spoke first to the greatest need. His need was for acceptance by Jesus and forgiveness by Jesus. And, of course, Jesus had the authority to heal him, but he was first 
using the authority he had been given to forgive him. And the religious leaders were offended at this. It says some teachers of the law were sitting there thinking to themselves, why does this fellow talk like that? He's blaspheming. For who can forgive sins but God alone? Now, of course, they were sitting in the presence of the Son of God, but they didn't acknowledge him as being the Son of God. Then so verse 8 says, immediately Jesus knew in his spirit that this was what they were thinking. And so he said to them, why are you thinking these things? Then he posed a question, and um, you can ask yourself this question. Is it easier to say to a paralyzed man, your sins are forgiven? Or is it easier to say to a paralyzed man, get up, take your mat, and walk? And so obviously anybody could say your sins are forgiven, and it wouldn't carry substance. It wouldn't be a legitimate spiritual transaction. But when the Son of God says your sins are forgiven, your sins are forgiven. And when the Son of God says, get up, take your mat, and walk, you're healed. And so Jesus said, get up, take your mat, and walk. And he did this because he wanted them to know that the Son of Man, Jesus, had the authority on the earth to forgive sins. They already had seen he had the authority to heal. But now he was demonstrating that he had the authority to forgive sins. And so the man, of course, got up and walked. And the demonstration of forgiveness and the demonstration of the power to heal was there. Both powers, both authorities resident within Jesus, the Messiah, the Son of God. In verse 18, John's disciples and the Pharisees were fasting. This is what we read. And some people came and asked Jesus, hey, John's disciples and the disciples of the Pharisees are fasting, but your disciples aren't fasting. Why not? And the answer that Jesus gave them is a very interesting uh, answer. It actually speaks to his entire mission. Jesus answered and said, how can the guest of the bridegroom fast while he's with them. Now, in so saying, he's naming himself as the bridegroom. He said, how can the guest of the bridegroom fast when he's still with them? Obviously, he's still on the earth. He's still with them. And this bridegroom he's talking about is himself. And he went on to say, they can't fast so long as they have him with them. But the time will come when the bridegroom will be taken from them. And on that day, they will fast. Prophetically, Jesus, of course, was looking toward his crucifixion when he would be taken. But I want to just dig down a few minutes on this this terminology, the bridegroom. You see, we in the church refer to the bride of Christ. And of course, for the church to be the bride of Christ, Jesus has to be the bridegroom. And Jesus, in this statement in Mark chapter 2, calling himself the bridegroom, is affirming that that was indeed his mission. He didn't come to, to earth to give everybody a, a certificate to get out of hell free. He came searching for a people who would be with him forever. That the Bible says this relationship Jesus desires with mankind is like a good marriage. Except it's not just a me and Jesus marriage forever. It's we and Jesus as the bride of Christ together a company of believers living together. This includes those who had come into faith under the old covenant, and now that the new covenant was coming online, those who would come to faith in the new covenant would be part of the bride. But he went on to say that the New Testament and the Old Testament are different. He gave this little explanation, verse 21. No one sews a patch of unshrunk cloth on an old garment. Otherwise, the new piece will pull away from the old and make the tear worse. And no one pours new wine into old wineskins. Otherwise, the wine will burst the skins, and both the wine and the wineskins will be ruined. No, they pour new wine into new wineskins. And so the new covenant, friends, is not a patch on the old covenant. The new covenant is a new covenant between God and man, in which Jesus, the Messiah, the Son of God, is the bridegroom, and the church is the bride. Under the old covenant, Israel was the wife of God. God the Father was the bridegroom of Israel. And so in type and shadow, speaking of the new covenant, where Jesus, the Son of God, would be the bridegroom and the church would be the bride. I wrote a whole book on this called The Wife of God. If you're interested in this topic, it's all about the bride of Christ. So it's a careful explanation of uh, the bride of Christ from the perspective of marriage customs alluded to in the scriptures, the various scriptures that portray our relationship in type and shadow with the Lord. It's on Amazon, the wife of God. If you're interested in the, the bride of Christ, and as a believer, you should be, you can find that book. Or you can simply come by the church and we'll we'll give you one if you want to come by and remind us. We'll be happy to give you one. But Jesus is Lord. Jesus is the bridegroom. Jesus has authority on earth. He's also Lord of the Sabbath. 
On verse 23, one Sabbath, Jesus was going through the grain fields, and as his disciples walked along, they began to pick up some heads of grain. The Pharisees said to him, look, why are they doing what is unlawful on the Sabbath? Their understanding was that to pick up grain to eat was work. That was the rabbinic interpretation of work, included um, picking food to eat on the Sabbath. In verse 27, Jesus said to them, the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. And of course, Jesus was Lord of the Sabbath. He was greater than the Sabbath. He was greater than the Old Covenant. He's greater than the New Covenant. He's greater than sin. He's greater than sickness. He's greater than all things. Our bridegroom has been given all authority in heaven and in earth. And he's looking for a called out people in the earth to come into a new marriage covenant with him. Just as there was an old covenant that was a marriage covenant for Israel, there's a new covenant that was given for all mankind, a covenant ratified in the blood of our bridegroom who paid the bride price for each of us, friends, for you and for me. And so today, Jesus is the bridegroom calling you to be with him, calling me to be with him. He's able to heal, save, and deliver to the uttermost. But more importantly, he wants to be with me and wants to be with you forever. The new covenant is just not a patch on the old covenant. It's a brand new wine skin intended to hold new wine and uh, the truths as revealed by Jesus Christ and the writers of the New Testament. So I want to pray for you today, and I want to pray for myself. Lord, I pray that we would recognize Jesus as the bridegroom. I pray, Lord, that we would recognize that the relationship you want to have with us is like a good marriage, where you're with us 24 hours a day, seven days a week, speaking to us and hearing our voices speaking to you, influencing our lives and interacting with everything we say and do. Lord, help to change our mindset so that we might understand you want much more than an hour or two a week of devotion. Lord, you're looking for friends and fellowship and relationship that you declare is like a good marriage. Lord, may we enter into that marriage of the Lamb in due season. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for listening to this episode of The Whole Word. It was brought to you by Whole Word Fellowship and the Northern Virginia House of Prayer. If you were encouraged, please share our podcast with your friends. We'd also appreciate it if you'd hit subscribe in your favorite podcast app and take a few moments to write a review. If you'd like more information on our church and our ministry, you can go to wholeword.net or wholewordpodcast.com for more information. Thank you again, and may the Lord Jesus bless you today and always.